Hello all, my name is Juha Nurmi and I'm going to talk about some new ideas what you could build uh, in top of Thor network. So first, uh, this is Disobey meeting. I'm very glad to be here, thank you for all. And I read this text from the disobey.fi website that this is a, a place where you can uh, take your own path and find new things. And I was thinking about uh, disobedience and civil disobedience. And my mind went to this guy who lived 200 years ago. He is like the founding father of civil disobedience. Do you know who is he? Somebody. Uh, he is actually Henry David Thoreau, and he wrote the book Civil Disobedience. And this is relevant to, in, in context of Thor, this is actually relevant because it's actually an act of civil disobedience to read Wikipedia in some countries or access Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. These web services are actually censored in multiple countries over over some places like China and places like Iran, you cannot access these sites unless you are doing something. Use some kind of method like Thor to get through the censorship. And uh, this is the Freedom of Press Index in the world. And as you can see, we are actually in a very special place because in Finland, you have good conditions here. You, you have great freedom of press index. But if you look where people are living, most of the population of the world is living in this area. And the situation is not that good there. And population density in these areas is quite low. Same thing with corruption. It's, it's very common that many governments work, many governments work under extreme corruption. It's, it's like a norm in the world. And that's why people actually use Tor. They have to protect themselves from censorship, from surveillance, and uh, they want to read Wikipedia, you should remember that. And as you, many of you know, Thor offers three things. Anonymity, basically anonymous TCP connection, censorship, circu circumvention, and privacy. And how many of you have used Thor? How many of you? almost everyone, so you basically know how Tor works. You can use Tor browser, that is a web browser, a modificated Firefox browser that is using Tor, putting your traffic through Tor network. <coughs> and Tor network is a network of voluntary, voluntary servers there are almost uh, 7,000 voluntary servers that are transferring Tor traffic. And you can see that uh, the number is quite constant. But uh, over time, these servers are using much faster connections, so actually Tor is able to move a lot of bandwidth at the moment. And every day, every moment, over its two million people are using Tor. So right now, about two million people are connected to Tor network, or two million Tor clients. If you're looking at this graph, 
you can see this weird spike here. This was actually a pod network that was using Tor. A short while, a pod network installed Tor clients to every zombie computer, and uh, they were behind the Tor network a while. That's the spike. But most of these clients are actually real Tor users at the moment. And there are a large number of unique Onion addresses. These are so-called hidden services or Onion services. And this means that you can install your server behind the Tor network. And then the server can be accessed, accessed only through Tor network. And nobody knows where the server physically is and what it's what is the real IP address of the server. I'm going to talk about how hidden services actually work, because I have few ideas how to use them to make uh, some networks more secure. So I'm going to explain how hidden services or onion services actually work. So in this picture, Bob is a hidden service. Bob has onion address. So first, Bob has to select some introduction introduce, introduce points, three of them. Then Bob is publishing this information to distributed hash table that is like the name server system for Tor. So Bob is telling that there is this, uh, this hidden service is available through these intro introduction points. And if there is Alice that wants to connect to this Onion address, first the Tor client of Alice is asking from the distributed hash table where he can find those introduction points. And Alice, Alice is also setting up a rendezvous point where the hidden service and Alice are going to meet. So Alice gets the information that, OK, there, there is this uh, introduction point, and he's uh, she is publishing information there that, uh, that uh, she wants to meet Bob. And Bob is answering, answering there that, OK, let's meet in the rendezvous point. And there, in the rendezvous point, they are making their circuits. So this is actually Tor, Tor circuit. This means that there is actually three servers every time there is a circuit. This is not direct TCP connection. This is Tor circuit. And they are meeting there. And after that, they are able to communicate to each other. So they can proceed any kind of communication using TCP protocol. <coughs> so this is basically Tor. Most of you know how it works. I have three ideas what you could do using Tor network to make the uh, world more secure place. One is to create new obfuscate, obfuscated TCP Tor protocol over DNS or ICMP or something else, because this is very useful for Tor network. The second idea is that you can use hidden services if you are running Internet of Things. You could, you could install Tor to your devices, and after that you could get uh, a unique address per one IoT device. And I, idea three, you could build a statewide Tor network that could act independently if whole country is cut off from the internet. 
So the first idea is to build some kind of obfuscated TCP protocol that the Tor browser could use. So if you try to use Tor from certain countries, like from China, you actually notice that Tor doesn't work out of the box because China is blocking the connection to public IP addresses of the Tor network. So you have to use some kind of fallback method to get the connection to the Tor network because you cannot access the public IP addresses of the relays. And there are actually several methods to do this. And these methods are obfuscating your, your traffic. <coughs> so for instance, uh, if you are using one of these methods, your traffic doesn't look like a Tor traffic. So if there is some kind of surveillance going on, the surveilling su surve surveillance system doesn't know that this is actually Tor traffic. It might look something really different, something like Skype call or something like that. And uh, it's not that hard to implement these kind of protocols where you can hide TCP connection inside some other protocol. There are these reference implementations like uh, ping tun tunnel. You can, you can put your TCP connection inside uh, ICMP packets. So basically you are just writing your TCP payload inside uh, ping requests and replies. And this is very common way to hide traffic. For instance, if you are writing some kind of malware or you need to hide your traffic because you are doing something nasty inside some company system. But there are a lot of reference systems for this. And this, with something like ping, ping tunnel, you can actually get uh, a decent bandwidth. So you, you could actually use this for something like browsing websites. It's, it's enough for that, so it, it should work. Another option is DNS tunneling. This is also a very common way to hide your traffic if you are, for instance, for instance, if you are have hacked some company system, you, you can hide your communication traffic inside DNS requests. And again, you can get a reasonable bandwidth with DNS. The latency is not very good, but again, this could be a fallback method for browsing websites if, if we would have this kind of uh, tunneling system for Tor. And I tried to look good reference implementations for these protocols. And there are multiple open source implementations for ICMP and, ICMP and DNS tunneling. And I think one of the best that worked very well out of the box is this soft ether VPN client that is actually supporting these tunneling methods by default. It worked well, very well, but I didn't look the code, but it was C++. It may be possible to use this kind of code if you would like to implement this kind of obfuscation method for Tor or something else, or you could use it for OpenVPN too, if you like. So there are these reference implementations, and I think it would be nice, nice to try to implement this to Tor. OK, second idea. You could use Onion addresses for IoT devices. And actually, 
there are these stealed onion addresses too. The difference between onion address and stealth onion address is that if you are using onion addresses, if you are creating an onion address, everyone can connect to your address. They can, they can try to make TCP connection, they can, scan, they, they can scan your ports. This is doable with normal hidden service. Your location is hidden but your existence is not hidden. Stealth onion, onions, on the other hand, you can hide the existence of the onion address too. So if there is some attacker, it cannot, cannot find your onion address. It cannot make any TCP connection to your address. Because uh, with stealth onion addresses, the introduction points are encrypted with a key and only if you share the key, people can access this onion address. <coughs> and at the moment, the security of IoT devices is so, so bad that you could almost say that it's a complete local and global security failure. And you can see that if you have, for instance, a uh, few months ago, there was the largest denial of service attack in the world. And it was caused by baby monitors, webcams, and toys. Basically, simple devices that people have their, in their homes, and there, there wasn't any security. There was like uh, things like default remote access uh, control user interfaces that were just public in, in, in the internet. And the attacker was able to, able to take millions of these devices and make very powerful denial of service attacks. So at the moment, there, there is complete security f failure. And it's a local failure and it's a global failure. So one solution is to make these devices to use Tor. And this, is, this might be very useful for multiple reasons. For instance, you actually get the actual address of some device. You can generate an onion address to your devices if you install Tor to them. And after that, you can access these devices even if they are behind some kind of, kind of firewall or uh, network address transformation. And I tested this with just my Raspberry Pi and installed Stealth SSH server there. Third idea, we could actually build some kind of independent fallback part of Tor inside Finland, for instance, or any other state. That might, that might be useful in the situation if there is a complete failure to connect to global internet. We could build some kind of statewide network that supports end-to-end -end encryption and has all the features of Tor. And Tor kind of tries to support this feature. There, are, there is this fallback director mode in, in Tor client and server. So you might be able to build something like this. You have few servers in Finland. And if for some reason, there is no internet connection from Finland to, co to global internet, the Tor would work inside Finland, just inside Finland. Of course, this is not good for privacy. There are multiple issues with that. But it might be use useful to have something inside one state if you have complete failure to connect to internet. Of course, if you have only few nodes, it's a complete privacy failure because 
there it's very easy to make some kind of traffic correlation inside one country, and after that you can destroy the anonymity of the system. But still, it, it might be better than nothing. It's actually hard to test this, because you cannot just randomly test the net split in the global internet. And like the founder of Tor project, Roger Dingeldein said that it would not be nice to practice nuclear war. But you could simulate this with simulated Tor network. And because Tor is uh, an open network and an open software, you can implement these things. I would like to help you if somebody would like to look these things with me, some of these, some of these ideas. You can build a healthy, open, transparent community and build these things to Tor and support Tor network that way. Maybe these ideas are good, maybe they are stupid. You can come to talk to me after this presentation. And now you can ask questions if you like. No questions? OK, there's one. Oh, it's working now. Uh, about uh, point number two. Uh, if IoT will be inside Stealth Onion Network and they belongs to Mirai Botnet, uh, could I continue idea? So you are thinking that Mirai Botnet would work? Operate through Stealth Onions. Yeah, but the point is that if you are using stealth but onions... They will be not identifiable. Um, then you should be able to share some kind of protected passwords. So there shouldn't be any pot network if you are protecting your connections and your interfaces. You are not publishing your uh, admin interface to the internet. <laughs> But uh, we previous presentation was about QNAP. So if you uh, refresh your QNAP device and uh, publish with new image uh, IoT interface for QNAP and admin interface, QNAP is ideal IoT for belongs for bot network through Stillphonion. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just a little bit curious about, you said that, for example, China is blocking some IP addresses to, to prevent access to the Tor network. Now, uh, my understanding is that they also have very strict controls over the DNS and the ICMP would kind of still work on that. So I kind of get the cool idea of pluggable transports, but would this actually solve the kind of problem that is happening there already? Um. Yeah, it, I don't know if it actually works in China. I'm not sure that you are able to use something like DNS tunnel in China. But the idea is that it would be pretty easy to implement that kind of tunneling system to Tor, and it, it would work somewhere. And at the moment, there are several methods to get through these kind of firewalls, for instance, in China. And it's a good idea that there are multiple of them because uh, then it's very hard to block every possible way to access Tor and hide your traffic. 
For instance, the Tor is hiding the traffic using meek proxy that is using Google, Google app servers. And it's very hard to block that connection. At least uh, it would work somewhere. Yep. Just wondering if there are questions. Thank you.